Hey, how's it going folks? It's Zuko and today we're going to be tackling the February pre-order roundup. Now February was a hectic month. We had a couple of massive figure events and a lot of those announcements are present in this video. These companies wanted to put them up as soon as possible. To be honest though, I can't fully remember everything that I like bookmarked for this video, but I know there's a lot. Now, the other thing I need to talk about is that Good Smile actually finally renewed their website. It's totally different, and I'm not sure how much I like it yet. Searching for the figures right now, it's kind of a crapshoot. Uh, I literally had to like search one by one, try and like remember what was actually announced, because there's not like a convenient source of like all the new pre-orders at the moment. That might get fixed eventually. Uh, but I'm saying all this just so you guys understand that I might miss something, but I tried my best, I gathered as much as possible, and hopefully it's smooth sailing. But anyway, let's get into those pop-up parades. Now this might be more of a recap, because we really did just see most of these figures, like Aqua and Ruby from Oshinoko, they're now available to pre-order. Though I will say, on the bottom here, I don't remember if we saw Kana painted, so that might be a new update for ya. Uh, but yeah, also, you're seeing the new website, which I have mixed feelings about. Um, I do like that they show, like, two images, like, front and center. Just helps me out, so I don't have to always scroll through everything. But you also have to scroll all the way down to get, like, more information about the figure, specifically who's making it, which is very annoying for me, because I can't remember all of these things, especially when we get to the scale figure section. But, you know, we'll see how this uh, develops and whatnot. It might not be, like, the finalized state of the website, um, but yeah, Ruby and Aqua, you can now pre-order them. You could also pre-order Tomoyo and Sakura from Cardcaptor Sakura. Now, I'm pretty sure I said this last time, you know, Sakura has a million figures out there. This one's very cute. We don't get too many in the school uniform. However, Tomoyo gets nothing. So this is actually a pretty big deal for her. And I think it's cute. I like how they stylize the eyes. It does really remind me of the anime or the manga's art style. So I think they did a pretty good job. You know, the paint job isn't like super impressive, but the outfits themselves aren't supposed to be super detailed, so I can forgive them for that. They also put up the Rin and Len Bring It On versions large size. So these are a bit taller, but also a little bit more expensive to compensate. I really like these designs, specifically Rin's. I think she looks adorable in this outfit. Though, I will say, they kind of messed up her mouth. I don't know, something looks strange about the shape of it. Maybe it's a bit too big, but I, I don't like this figure as much as I did when I initially saw it. Still cute, still dig it. These are fun designs, but I feel like they fumbled it a little bit. I guess there's really nothing to complain about when it comes to Len, though. I did not register that he was also making a heart sign with his hands because I've never seen anybody like put their knuckles together and point the thumbs down to make a heart. But that's totally what that is and it works like the shape is exactly what it should be. So that's cool. That's neat. I learned something but I've never seen anybody else do that. So I'm wondering if that's like a common thing. Next up was Mitsumi and Sosuke from Skip and Loafer. Now these two were also at One Hobby. I think these might be the last two pop-up parades from that event. Now this is actually a two-pack. You don't have to buy them together. You can buy them separately if you would like, but I do think it's kind of neat that you can buy them together. I don't think you really get a discount, but you'll also, you know, get a nicer box, I suppose. Actually, I just realized this. I am very dumb. If you get the two-pack, you can have them hold hands or do a little dance. Whatever this is supposed to be, they're skipping and loafing, <laughs> I suppose, but uh, yeah, you can't do this, obviously, if you buy them separately because this is like a bonus part included with the special set. So I feel like if you like this series, get the two pack. I don't know if this is exclusive. I can't find that information on the site right now because they made it harder for me. But um, yeah, that's adorable. I like that a lot. We're almost done with the pop-up parades. Here we have Anya Forger on the outing version. I've always felt like these Anya pop-ups were a bit of a ripoff. Not that they look terrible or anything, but they're the exact same price as every other standard pop-up but she's half the size. It does not make sense to me. If she was like 3,800 yen, even though I still feel like that wouldn't be exactly fair, I would be like, all right, fine, I get it. She's popular, but at least they're trying to lower the price. But I don't know, she has so many like prize figures that I feel like you don't 
really need this unless like this outfit doesn't exist anywhere else in figure form, but I feel like that would be very hard to believe. Next up we had Botan from Hololive, which looks excellent in my opinion, like most Hololive pop-ups do. She really deserves a scale figure at some point. I think she has a Nendo. Maybe a Figma? Her design is just sick. It just totally works in figure form. And I'm very surprised that more companies haven't like jumped on like the opportunity to make a figure of her. But at least good small companies doing it. And it's gonna be cheap at the very least. But we have one more pop-up parade to talk about. Save the best for last, of course. Here we have Kirby, who I think looks outstanding. Very vibrant palette. Looks adorable as Kirby typically does. And I think, you know, for once, we're actually getting a pretty involved base here with the warp star, the trailing star is right, the purple and blue gradient in the translucent plastic. I think it all looks great. Good stuff for 4,800 yen. However, pre-orders are closed, which is kind of annoying because he went up for pre-order February 1st. And I remember that because I was going to include him in the last video, but I decided not to because it was long enough but I'm recording this on February 29th. So the month's not even over yet, and yet you can't pre-order this guy anymore. I'm sure some stores still carry him, but I feel like you gotta give us a little bit more time on this stuff. I can't make a monthly video without some of these figures already closing their pre-order windows. I find that a little aggravating, but that really is a me problem. But uh, yeah, you know, Kirby's great, games are great, character's great, just a cute little guy. If you want this figure, I'm sure it won't be too hard to track it down. And if for whatever reason you missed out on this and it just is so rare for whatever reason, there's like a million figures of Kirby. The Nendoroids are just as good. But I like this. For the price tag, I think this was a nice surprise. But anyway, it's scale figure time. So first up we have the Rika Takarada wall figure. This one up extremely fast after one hobby, but she's only 14,000 yen. Extremely cheap. However, this figure is a little on the small side. Rika is about 170 millimeters, and up to the like wall shelf up here is 360. And as you can see, you do actually get this piece. They give you the instructions for it on how to set it up and whatnot. And you could also buy this acrylic case if you, I guess, don't want to display her against a wall or something. I'm not sure, but that's what this is kind of implying that you could just like set this up and then have her hang down it. So you don't have to worry about, I don't know, drilling into the wall and whatnot. Which is nice of them, right? Because not everybody's really going to want to do that. I think it actually looks good. It looks up to the standards that Good Smile typically puts out. It's a cute pose. It looks just like Rika. But it's certainly a very, like, gimmicky niche thing. Like, I don't see a ton of people wanting this, even though, like, they're presenting something that does seem fun and unique and different just, you know, for the industry. I don't want to, like, damage it. You know what? If she's, like, swinging around accidentally, might, like, bang into a wall or something. I'm going to guess she's glued onto that seat because you wouldn't want her like popping off. But at the same time, like, I guess unless you, you know, live in an area with earthquakes, probably don't have that much to worry about. But if you do, this might be like one of the worst things to buy. All I can really do is speculate right now. I'll wait to see how it turns out. I'm expecting other like figures in this line to come out. I can't imagine Rika is the only one. They typically don't like one and done these kind of things but we'll see. Another cheap figure was actually Marin from Max Factory. Now, if Good Smile was making this, this would be what I would expect, but Max Factory is so bad with their pricing sometimes, I really expected this to be closer to like 24,000, because they typically get away with that. But surprisingly under 17,000 yen, and I'm pretty sure this is a standard release. Now, every time I've seen this figure, we've had this angle, and I feel like it didn't really look like her, but I will say, I like this photo of her. I think she looks rather lovely here. Uh, I'm not going to say this is her best figure or anything, because I still have some issues with it, depending on how you look at her. But I do feel like I like this more than I initially did. And I can guarantee you Max Factory quality is going to be better than, like, I don't know, Aniplex quality. They're just the better company. You could argue with me on that in the comments if you want, but I'm pretty sure that's a fact. I mean, at this point in the game, we have so many Marin figures, and I really do feel like at some angles, like this one front view of her, it just doesn't remind me of Marin. But you turn her around, and then it kind of does. I, I don't know. Uh, I do like the pose, though. Very fun, very lively. The wink, the expression. She looks cute, of course. Uh, the colors are very vibrant. The gradients of her hair is on point, of course, as well. But 
I don't know. I'm like 50-50 on this one, but at the very least, she is extremely affordable, which I was definitely not expecting. We also had the Albedo Negligee version. Now, I feel like a million companies have made figures like this already. Maybe I'm misremembering, but this doesn't really feel like an exciting announcement to me. Uh, Good Smile Art Shanghai is making this figure. I don't know if they've made an Albedo before, but this is a pretty good price tag for an Albedo figure, just because, like, she pretty much always comes with her wings. And I think they did a pretty good job sculpting and painting them. Nothing to complain about there. I think the negligee is fitting, just like the colors, very dark, mostly black with some gray, uh, and the translucent bits on the bottom, but like the sheer material up top, or not actual sheer material, but what it's supposed to represent, I think looks good. Her face looks nice too. Um, I just don't think this is super exciting. But hey, if you like Albedo, there is another option for you. Next up was the Racing Miku 2023 version designed by Tori Domino. Known for making very cute, albeit pretty curvy characters, and he definitely stuck with that idea. However, feels like he was holding back a little bit, which is very respectable uh, as far as like Miku is concerned. You don't need to make Miku that thick, uh, but he, he still tried. Now, unfortunately, as cute as this figure is, they're also making another figure based on this design that is just simply more charming, in my opinion. It looks so much more cuter, much more creative. I really like that prototype we've seen so far. So while this one isn't bad by any means, I just feel like it's a little bit too standard in comparison. This figure is also very expensive at just about 28,000 yen. And while most Miku figures are pretty expensive because of her twin tails, I don't really feel like her twin tails like volume is like, I don't know, thick enough voluminous enough, right? Like, I don't know, it just doesn't seem like there's that much hair in this design that's really warranting that price tag. Do like the little birds? Uh, I don't really have a problem that they're being supported by these uh, acrylic stands. It's kind of a shame that they seem to plug into the base itself. That could change over time, not sure. But at least, like, her hair doesn't need to be supported, right? It's just for the little birds, so I don't really think it's a problem. And they're cute, too. I, I like the designs of them. I think this is excellent, it's just unfortunate that an even better one is probably on the way. They also put up the Hatsune Miku Shimian Maifu version, which is based off of a very famous Chinese song, or at least I believe that's the idea behind the inspiration of this figure. This figure is also very expensive at 36,000 yen, but because of how sophisticated this design is, how refined the sculpt and the paint are, I don't really have a problem with that. You're really paying for the artistic talent that is managing to bring such a detailed sculpt to life. And if you could afford it, then I think it's totally worth it. Like even the way they sculpted her dress, it is so thin. It's like one of those Greek statues where they did the exact same thing, but you can't comprehend how they did it back in the day. Like how is that even possible? Obviously it's not to that degree, but it's very pretty here. It emphasizes how beautiful this piece is and how beautiful Miku is herself. Uh, but there really is a lot going on with this. She's like playing a lute or some kind of similar instrument, right? Which is very pretty on its own. Uh, I love the style of her face. Very different for a good small company Miku. Other companies will make Miku however they want. But good small company typically has like one or two designs they stick with. But this is like nothing like that, right? And I find it very cool. It's very stylized uh, and to like my liking, right? Uh, but there's also like a bunch of like flames circling her. And they kind of have like a bronzed gold paint job to it, like the orange and yellows don't, but then like the edges of the flames do. And the whole idea here is that it's supposed to like imitate like an ink painting, and, and I do think that comes across with her hair and the flames for sure. Uh, whatever this is supposed to be up here, this like smear effect. Even the inside of her hair has some of that like orange and brown from the flames, which is a really neat touch. Uh, there's also some, like, little birds circling her. Like, there's a lot, right? Just her hair is spinning all around it. The flames are also spinning kind of in, like, the opposite direction, it seems. Uh, so it's just, like, a, a spiral that mesmerizes you. But I don't know. Like, if I had more money, if I was buying more Miku figures, this would definitely be, like, in the top five right now of ones to consider. Uh, and hey, maybe, maybe I will. I don't know. Depends where I am when this comes out uh, at the end of the year. All right, so we talked about something awesome. Let's talk about something that's not. This is the Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood Roy and Hughes double figure. Can't buy them separately. This is made by Proof, and as you could see, it's 61,000 yen, 
which we did know about because this was shown off at one fest. Now I did give them the benefit of the doubt at that event because we had one pretty crappy photo. But unfortunately, I really don't think things got better. In fact, now that we have clearer photos, this figure just feels like a huge ripoff. Like, I know we don't get Hughes figures, we don't get that many of Roy, or even that many for Full Metal Alchemist outside of like Ed and Al, but like, y you could have done better. You know, you definitely could have done better for 61,000 yen. Uh, a lot of my complaints really just comes down to their faces though. I, I kind of hate them. I would in fact say they look bad to me. Uh, and while the flame is fine, I don't think it's a justification for this price, you know? Like, it looks okay, but we've definitely seen better from proof as far as, like, flames and explosions and, like, ice from other figures from the My Hero Academia line. But this just looks like a, a bit of a whimper in comparison. I, I don't love it. I think, like, the coats and the jackets, like, the colors of the blue and the the light like white airbrushing or shading and gradients th those look fine like all the paint on the outfits look good but at this price tag you can get so many nicer figures you can get that miku i think that miku would be way better of a deal even though it's only one character but i don't know uh i don't see this one selling well and that's a shame because that'll just like discourage the company from making more figures for fma but you also shouldn't buy figures that are this expensive if you don't like how they look, and I certainly don't. So yeah, kind of a bummer. Next up, we had the Arms Note Powered Bunny. Now this one was kind of a surprise. I think they just put this up because she was shown off at so many events unpainted, and then just all of a sudden, up for pre-order 30,000 yen. I don't actually remember what company this is. I think it's Kadokawa, which we'll find at the bottom of the page. I think yes it is okay very expensive figure but you can buy her without like the equipment on her sides so you could see more of those uh photos up here which i kind of get because she is a bunny girl so you might not want all of that extra equipment it's only like i don't know three thousand yen less if you don't want the gear though so i guess consider that if you're gonna pick this girl up i do like it i like how she's adjusting the suit i think that's fun her suit is also very tight on the back as you can see here uh so that might be enticing for you but i just think this price is a little bit too much for a one seventh i believe bunny girl not that it looks bad or anything uh and honestly i do think i like it more without the extra equipment it's just a bit too bulky you know but if you buy the special version you could just take it off and then you know you could choose whether or not you want to display it uh, but it's nice that you get an option to just not go in on all the extra parts, even if you don't save that much money on it. We also had from Fat Company, the PA-15 Marvelous Yam Pastry Heavy Down. I feel like this figure had a different name before. I don't remember it being called Yam Pastry. Uh, but yeah, PA-15, she's got a bunch of figures. I think at this point, three? And they might all be from Fat Company, so they definitely like her. Uh, this one has been painted forever, and I guess she's finally available to pre-order for 26,000 yen. I feel like they're pushing it a little bit, but that is Fat Company. Their prices are on the higher side. Not typically justified from their quality, if you ask me. But this isn't a bad-looking figure. I love her hair. I guess just because of the character design, it is so messy. But I do think that translates into a pretty attractive sculpt as far as just like, I don't know, nice hair sculpts are concerned. Uh, the colors are nice too. I think her colors in general always look good. She's got this oversized sweater on, uh, barely on. You know, the hearts are cute, but this is also a pretty suggestive figure. It's like barely covering her in some aspects. So I don't know if you're going to be able to see anything. I, I would not be surprised if you can. But uh, yeah, they're not going to show that on the Good Smile page. And also I like her face. She has heart eyes, but she also just looks very tired and a little mischievous. So it's good. It's a good figure in my opinion, but I don't know. She's really not wearing that much. This is a lot of money for it in my opinion. I would say like 22 would have been a sweet spot. Fat Company also put up their say Shonen Gone figure from Fake Grand Order for 28,000 yen. This price tag kind of sucks. Now, it's not the worst price tag we've seen today, but you can get some really nice Fate figures for around this price. And I just don't really know where they're coming from by asking this much. It's very cute, don't get me wrong. The colors are very vibrant. Love the expression, love the pose with the double peace sign, right? A little bit of motion with the jacket, lively enough, dynamic enough for a standing pose, right? 
but I just don't see the justification for this price tag. It might be the colors, like painting the figure, right? Because it looks a little complex, the blue into the black into the red. Might be a little annoying, might be a little time consuming, but I don't know. I, I feel like this figure is not going to sell well, and there's like two more figures of her on the way. Though I think it's her like skateboard outfit, so it's totally different. I believe this is her main outfit, so that might make you want to pick this one up instead, and I totally understand that. But this also feels like something that will drop in price over time. So I would say risk it, you know, don't pre-order it, just wait for it to come out. It will probably be a little bit cheaper on the aftermarket. Following her though, we had the Bungo Stray Dogs Chuya 15-year-old version and Osumu Dazai 15-year-old version. Both of these two are made by Kadokawa. They're 1 7 scale for 20,000 yen. Now, because they're younger, I'm guessing they're not as tall as they could be. Probably pretty small for male characters. However, kind of surprised at how nice the paint jobs look on these two. They're very simple, but the shading, the gradations, like in their hair, the glossiness of this jacket, it's all pretty good for this price point. Even the uh, vest here might be pearlescent, a little hard to say for sure, it might just be glossy. I even like their bases, while they're very basic, they have like a modern look to them, very sleek in their design and the way they're colored. So, good stuff, not bad at all if you ask me. And I think this might be our last figure before the freeing section, but this is the Shinano Dreams of the Hazy Moon version. I believe Good Smile Art Shanghai is making this one. Pretty expensive at 34,700 yen, but I feel like this is one of those figures that is definitely justifying the price tag, right? This looks lovely, absolutely beautiful. I love how they sculpted her tails, having those nice blue tips of them. Didn't cheap out in any way with the sculpts, with the paint. Looks excellent, her hair looks lovely, her dress is draping down, right? The inside of it has like a snowflake pattern on it. I'm not sure what you would call this like furniture piece, kind of looks like a moon, but it's got like a little stand over here for some uh, some wine, which he is drinking, on uh, some flowers over here. It, it looks very elegant, right? I think that's the best way to describe this piece. Uh, very fluffy because of these tails. And you know, because she's an Azur Lane character, she's looking very attractive and sexy as well. So no complaints from me. I think this looks outstanding. Love the colors. The paint looks excellent. And the sculpt is very impressive. Uh, definitely one of the better figures I've seen from the company. But now we move on to freeing. I believe they had six announcements this month. First up were two bare leg bunnies, one for Ilya and one for Chloe. I don't believe they changed the colors on these two, so these are just straight up re-releases. Not really too much to say about them, but hey, if you didn't know they're coming out, now you do. Next up was Kuroneko for 35,200 yen. Now that price isn't outrageous, but she is surprisingly the most expensive bunny we're going to talk about today. And it does not feel justified. It's only by like 2,000 yen, but I don't really understand why the price increased compared to everybody else. Uh, she looks good though, you know, I think Kirino also looked pretty good. I don't know if she's also in this gallery like at the end. Typically they do that. Um, yeah, these are just two bunnies that should have happened like ages ago, literal years ago. But it's probably better that it happened now just because like their quality has improved, their sculpts have improved. So in the end, this is for the best. Next up, let's see, let's talk about this one. We have Vermeil bunny version. 33,000 yen. See, I don't understand this because if you were to ask me, this certainly feels like the more expensive figure. I mean, there's definitely more plastic with this one, if you get what I'm saying. And she's also got, you know, demon horns, a demon tail, might be a succubus. I don't know the lore, but I do think she looks pretty good. I like her face. I like her expression. I like the colors and the pose is good too. We typically don't get you know, freeing figures where the top is completely down and they're covering the chest with their arm. Uh, very different, very rare. Now next up was probably the biggest surprise as far as bunny figures are concerned this month, and that was Nagatoro. Out of nowhere, she just got a bunny figure for 33,000 yen, which once again, just makes you wonder why Kuroneko is 35. Just doesn't make sense to me. This looks very good though, totally in character, both with the expression and the pose. It's another pretty unique pose too. You know, I'm not like the bunny figure guy, but making all these videos, I typically don't see them like pull down the suit to show like some of the chest and like the tan lines, which is a nice touch as well. It just feels totally unique to this figure. And I like that. Now, maybe this isn't the most like iconic expression they could have picked, but I still think it's a good one. 
Uh, and overall, I would say they did a great job just with like the whole thing. Nothing to really complain about. I could see them making like another figure of her in the future, maybe changing the expression, maybe changing the color. But the black suit is very fitting, so this could be a one and done. And I probably should have mentioned this one earlier just because I don't really have that much to say about it. But Mona Kawai, bunny version from Freeing, 33,000 yen once again. She looks cute. Pretty standard stuff, all things considered, though. The black suit, the way she's covering her chest. I feel like I've seen that pose before. I think Komi might be doing the same thing. Uh, but I will say, I like her eyes. They are a nice color. It's like a pink. I like that shade. So, uh, not bad. Not bad at all. But I just don't have that much to add here. Anyway, that's gonna do it for the freeing section. Kotobukiya put up like six or seven figures that we've seen in the past, all fully painted back then too. So right now I'm mostly curious about like what bonuses they come with, which is why I'm on their store. So first up is the Persona 3 Pro Tag for 19,200 yen. We really don't get any figures of this guy and Persona 3 is the best one if you ask me. So I like that they're making this. I think his base looks very cool too with the glass kind of just like rising up. But yeah, his bonus faceplate, he's pretty much just doing like a little shout or something. It's more expressive for sure, but it doesn't feel like a necessity. Next up from Q, we had Tetsuro as well as Kenma. Yeah, these actually don't have bonus faceplates. I don't know why, but I'm not against that, right? They're both about 19,000 yen, which seems like a pretty fair price. I don't think I ever commented on it, but I don't love the black glossy discs that they have underneath the tree. I think all four of the figures do include something like that. And I feel like it's a bit distracting. It doesn't blend in naturally. They could have just made some like grass or I don't know, dirt or something, depending on like what the setting is actually supposed to be. But they didn't do that. It's not a big deal or anything. I think the sculpts are overall good especially because we really don't get any high Q scale figures. So, you know, complaining about nothing for the most part, but I do wish they went with a different approach there. Suguru Geto, Hidden Inventory, Premature Death Version, Deluxe Edition. So there is a standard edition as well, and it'll cost about, I don't know, 19,000 yen, whereas this guy is 25,000 yen. Now, I do feel like this one looks better than the Gojo figure, but my one complaint was his lifeless ass expression. I was not a fan of it. The flames or the smoke or the cursed energy, that all looks sick. But as you can see, the bonus faceplate is like a smirk or a smile. It looks better, but it's also gonna be a bit more of a pain in the ass <laughs> to get this version. So I don't know, bit tough of a call there because I do think it improves the figure a little bit, but I don't know if it's worth going out of your way for. We had the Delta Ending version for 19,800 yen. A lot of these figures cost the exact same price. I kind of like that consistency, especially when it's just under 20,000 yen. But yes, yeah, the cat girl eating some hamburgers in like overalls <laughs> and nothing else. Uh, her faceplate is, or the bonus faceplate, where is the image? That is very cute. I like that. Especially like the food kind of sticking to her cheeks. That's good stuff. Okay, I like that one. That's probably worth getting. I don't know. I mean, both fit the sculpt, so I don't think it's a necessity, but I do think it's very cute, and I kind of like this one more. From the King of Fighters, we're getting Angel as a Bishoujo statue for 18,700 yen. Now, unlike the other figures we saw at the Kotobukiya collection, they actually showed us what our bonus faceplate was. And if you ask me, this is what the figure should have looked like in the first place. This is perfect, whereas the normal one isn't bad at all, don't get me wrong, but I just love the expressiveness that is on display with the bonus faceplate. And if you don't remember this announcement, like all the images really wanted to show off her body, just like how toned her stomach is, how round her butt is, right? Uh, they went to town with this figure for sure. I think they did a good job with it. Excellent pick for a figure from the King of Fighters as well and I hope they continue making more. I think they're making Leona next, so look forward to that. And then last up was actually Free Ren for 19,800 yen. Now, her bonus faceplate is a nice smile, simple, but effective, looks cute, but my main issue here, and I thought about this for a little bit after like I initially saw this figure, the shape of her face is just wrong. It just doesn't look like Free Ren anymore. It needs to be rounder, right? Like that is very important. Like her chin is so sharp, why? design it like that. The ears are sharp. That's good. The ears are great. The hair looks nice. Why is the shape of her head wrong? It just doesn't add up. 
I don't know why you would take this approach with her because it just starts to not look like her the longer you look at this figure. So I'm personally not a big fan of it. I really do want a free rent scale at some point, but this is not going to be the one for me. It looks fine, but they really messed up the shape of her head to the point where it just bothers me a little bit too much. All right, so I don't know why it's like very hard to find a listing for this figure. Also, the images are just scrolling on their own, but Aniplex is re-releasing their Ultimates Modica figure, which is not a surprise because we saw the Homura one go up for pre-order a couple of months ago. It actually took quite a while to get here, but just in case you wanted this and you didn't know, it finally got a re-release because this is a very expensive figure on the aftermarket. Now you know. I hope you can still pre-order it. Actually, you definitely can because it says up to March 18th. So just keep that in mind. The price tag is a little high, but I think it makes sense. All the figure prices are going up, and this one's rather elaborate and lavish, so I get it. But also, while we're here on the Aniplex page, I want to talk about Amane Kanata, her 1-7 scale figure. Now, I don't know if you know this, but as soon as this figure came out, she like doubled in price on the aftermarket. It became rare immediately and very high in demand. So Claynell re-released this figure immediately, which is really nice to see that they're actually keeping track of like their figures on the aftermarket and just like helping meet that demand because nobody wants to spend like 50,000 yen on a figure they missed out on. But uh, yeah, if you like this, if you like her, you probably shouldn't let that happen again. And I think you should just take this opportunity to pre-order this figure, right? I think that would make sense. It looks good too. So um, yeah, that's it. I am all over the place today. Here we are at Hobby Genki. For some reason, this Gantz figure of Reika by Q's Q is like not listed everywhere. It's not on Ami Ami Global. It is on their like Japanese store, but I don't know, Americans and everyone else who's not Japanese can't buy it. For some reason, I don't know. But just in case you wanted the Reika figure from Q's Q, she is up for pre-order right now. The colors look a little bit darker than when we saw her at one fest like her outfit looks almost black but there is some like really dark blue mixed in which probably will look excellent in person and yeah her face is very pretty and i think i said this last time i just love the flow of her hair it's super dynamic looking despite uh how she's really just standing there just trying to make a sexy pose but it works it definitely works i don't really know what i want to talk about next so i guess we'll just go here here we have the digsta like a dragon ichiban battle style version for 9,400 yen. Now this is his second figure from Dig, and it looks worse in my opinion. I mean, the sculpt isn't that bad or anything. His face still looks wrong to me, uh, but it's really these seam lines in his arms, and he doesn't have um, like accessories, so there's no reason for those to be there. They didn't hide them in a great way. Uh, like honestly, around his waist, like the belt probably would have been the best place to put the seam lines, but. I don't know, visually this just looks a bit too flawed for my liking, which is a shame, because Ichiban is a pretty cool dude, and he definitely deserves better than these. From Wanderer, we had an Asuka Langley Shikinami 1-7 scale for 17,000 yen, not a bad price at all, but I don't think this figure looks that good. The hair, man, it's always the hair, why make her hair translucent like that? It does not look great. On top of that, I don't like this pose, they're trying to do a sexy thing with it, not my cup of tea. Uh, I also prefer the red plug suit, so in the end, I don't think anything about this figure is really stand out for me. Uh, I guess her face looks fine. That's good. Nothing to really complain about there. Uh, and the price is good. But for me personally, I feel like a different Asuka figure would be the way to go. Speaking of 17,000 yen figures, here we have the Takina and Chisato Hawaii versions from Claynell. One seven scales for 17,000 yen is pretty damn good. And I actually like these. Now, I guess the reasoning for the price is that their outfits aren't like super detailed or anything, especially like the bottom of the dress. They have a nice floral pattern on them, but I guess they're not like super wrinkly or anything. Uh, and they're really not wearing like that much in terms of clothing, but definitely feels like they could have gotten away with 20,000. So I feel like that's pretty damn commendable. And I love the colors too. I feel like both the blue and the red are very rich. The flowers in their hair, the lay, it's all excellent. I, I think these are very nice figures for the price. Uh, their faces look very accurate. I feel like Chisato looks slightly better, but that might be because of the expression. But I do feel like I've seen cuter figures of Takina. So 
I don't know, just speaking my opinion here. They're both good, very good for the price for sure. You even get beach bases with both of them, and while it's not like the most intricate beach base or anything, they definitely tried with the sand and the wave. I even like the color of the wave, typically it's a darker blue, but they made it light blue here, and I like that. So yeah, excellent stuff. Here we have another K-Angel figure, this time by Furyu for 17,000 yen, also at the 1 7 scale. I don't know what's going on, but I definitely like it in terms of pricing. Now, the main figure of K-Angel that's currently out right now is Apex's version, but I was never a real big fan of that one. The colors looked a little bit muted, I guess. I don't know if these are like perfectly accurate, but I definitely prefer the more vibrant palette here. Uh, and I also just didn't like her face that much. I feel like her eyes might have been too far apart. The base, there's no base here, right? Apex definitely like clears this figure in terms of the bases, but it's not the only reason to buy a figure. And this is still very cheap at the same time. Now, for some reason, it's not in this gallery. I guess it's an exclusive bonus somewhere. Uh, you could actually see it back here, but this little cat, I'll put an image of it on screen right now, is actually included with this figure. You get a mini figure of the cat's emoji from the game, which I love. I love that freaking cat. It's so damn cute and sad, and that would actually be a major reason as to why I would buy this. I feel like knowing Furyu, though, this might lean over time or they might include a little stand right here, which would be a little annoying, but I don't know. Uh, we'll see in the future, but at the very least, this is extremely cheap, and I do like the way it's presented so far. Maybe this was what I was thinking about earlier. Here is another Albedo lingerie figure, 1 7 scale from Kleinel for 25,000 yen. That's about like a 2,000 yen difference, I believe. Not a big deal if you like one design over the other. Uh, this one for the lingerie is taking more inspiration, I suppose, from the original, like, main dress that she wears, the white and gold dress. The pose this time around, I guess, is trying to be a little bit more seductive, just like with her expression, how she's leaning forward, right? Uh, what I really like about this figure in comparison, I guess it's not a contest or anything, but I like how her wings are kind of like folding downwards and they're kind of like bending a little bit as they hit the floor. I think that just makes them look a little bit more natural, a little bit more real as that sense of realism to her wings, right? Which I think you definitely want when it comes to scale figures, just that hints of like reality, like they're crossing over when they get to the 3D form of a scale figure. Uh, it's neat. I like that. I feel like that would be an underrated aspect of this design. Also like how her hair is draping down her face. I don't remember what it looked like on the other scale, though. It could have been just like this, but uh, I do like the way they sculpted her hair. I was draping down her shoulders as well. Um, so yeah, Claynell definitely did a good job here. Uh, this one feels a little bit saucier in terms of the design. I also like the base a little bit more. Maybe not the rim of it, but I do like the red. I think that pop definitely adds a lot to the palette. Um, yeah, it's good. I think I missed this one earlier because proof figures are on Good Small Company's page, but I just didn't see it when I was searching for everything to talk about. But either way, we just saw this one at One Hobby, went up for pre-order immediately. Kyoko Otanashi with Soichiro, 1-7 scale, 24,000 yen. I think we saw that price tag last time too. Um, is it a bit much? Maybe, but you are getting the dog and the dog house, and I guess like the fronts of their house with like the name plaque on it, brushing away the dirt and whatnot. It's just nice that we're getting a figure of a character from like so long ago. That's what I like to see. Retro characters actually getting some figures in 2024. I love that, and I wanna see more of it in the future. And we definitely saw a lot of that at One Hobby. So hopefully that continues to be a nice trend. All right, next up we have the Azur Lane Honolulu Manju Mischief version, 1 6 scale by Rebos for 26,300 yen. Now, this one's a bit of a Christmas themed figure. Well, not really a bit, this definitely is a Christmas themed figure, as she's either changing into or out of a reindeer costume. But also, the little Manju birds are like wrapping her in ribbon, which is making this a bit suggestive as the ribbons kind of tighten up around the chest and the butts, of course. Not sure what that's all about, but at least they're fighting back for once. That's good to see. Uh, interestingly enough, her tights are actually fabric. They're not plastic, so I guess you could take them off if you don't want them on. Uh, though, I do feel like it kind of fits the theme of changing clothes and whatnot, so I would probably leave them on. 
Uh, I really do like her expression. It's very exaggerated. She's definitely in a state of panic, which is kind of fun to see. Really don't love her hair though. It kind of reminds me of Twizzlers. Just looks so shiny and cheap and plasticky. Uh, not much in regards to shading or gradation. Uh, so, eh, kind of bland for that, but otherwise, I do like most of this concept. It, it looks pretty good. They're having fun with it for sure. Uh, most of it does not feel lazy, but then they kind of just, you know, cheaped out with the hair, at least a little bit. Okay, next up is surprisingly bendy office lady Chan who doesn't want to go to work. White version. A 1-6 scale by Magi Arts for 19,200 yen. Now, there is actually a pink version if you want that instead. Though, personally, I prefer the white, as it feels more traditional for this type of outfit. Yeah, I mean, this is a bit of like a goofy figure, I suppose. The whole point is to show how flexible she is, but also, I guess, how little she actually wants to do anything. She's getting out of her seat, just stretching to such an exaggerated degree. Uh, but I, I kind of like it, just for how, like, silly this entire thing is. The photos aren't the best in this gallery, but I really do like her eyes. Uh, I'll get a photo of that and put it on the screen right now. Yeah, very self-explanatory figure, but I also kind of like it. The art style is charming, the idea is charming. It's weird, but it's fun. From Metacos Entertainment is a new figure of Guts from Berserk, the Black Swordsman version, a 1-7 scale for just about 27,000 yen. Now, it's a bit of a rarity to get any figure of Guts or anything from Berserk, really. That's not gonna break the bank. Now, this is still expensive, but typically, you know, polystone statues, resin statues, things that are like one-third scale, one-fourth scale, that's typically, like, what is offered for Berserk. So it's just kind of rare, right? Like, we never get stuff like this. And I kind of like it, you know what? I don't think I'm gonna buy it, because I have one on pre-order from Prime 1, and the pop-up parade, of course. But I like what I'm seeing here. I think the real standout is, well, one, his face, like his expression. Pretty rare to get, like, a grin like that. He's having a good time right now. And also the arm cannon, not only having it open, but he's actually shooting it. There's an explosion coming out of his arm. Though that is an optional piece, you don't actually have to put it on your Guts figure if you don't want to. So the option is appreciated. I think the Dragon Slayer looks great. It's all bloodied up, but also very damaged, chipped away, just like showing all that wear from how much it's been used. His armor looks very well painted, right? And he's got a bit of an involved base too, if I could find a photo of it. Just a bunch of like skeletons, some spears and swords that have rusted away. Many battles have been fought on this field. I think that's the point of the base. I mean, the world of Berserk is not great, as everybody knows. And I think that gets the point across pretty well. Uh, so yeah, I'm not really super familiar with this company's quality, but I do think the prototype is very promising. I hope they deliver on this one. Here we have the Girls Frontline ZB26, the thousandth paper crane heavy damage version. This one has been painted for so long, I'm surprised it took this long to put up for pre-order. Uh, and my opinion of it hasn't really changed. I think her hair looks great. I love the design of it, love the color, the sculpts, excellent stuff. And the dress technically does have a very lovely sculpt, I just don't like the color of it. Uh, the only thing I do like about the dress is the burnt, crispy edges on the bottom. Uh, that's really like the main damage of this figure. I guess up here by her chest, it's really not holding on by much, which is fair. And then the front also has some of those burn marks, which I really do like. I think that is probably the best part of the dress. This is a very expensive figure though at 33,000 yen, but Eastream is making it, so I'm not really surprised by that. From Design Coco, we had a Hatsune Miku Miku Expo figure, the grand prize design from their contest, which uh, I guess doesn't really have an official name, but it looks kind of like a wind-up toy, like a music box kind of thing, where she has the, the wind-up key in the back, and you can't actually spin it, but that's what it's supposed to remind you of, especially because of the base down here. I feel like it's all very thematically fitting for the concept. Uh, not really a design that's for me. I do think it's cute. I love the bun hair and her weird skirt or dress, how it's so short, but very wide at the same time. Uh, it's a fun design for sure, very fresh for Miku, but I don't know, not really my style, but I, I can't knock it. There's nothing to knock, it's nice. But it kind of reminds me of clowns, and I'm not the biggest fan of clowns. I do also like how long her legs look, but typically Miku's legs are pretty long. But I guess because of like the way the dress is angled, it's just making them look even longer. And also because she's tiptoeing like a ballerina, so maybe she's supposed to be a ballerina instead. Here's another one we've seen painted for a while now, Hinata from Naruto, version 4. Can't believe they made 4 of these at this point. 
though they are drastically different, so I think that's fine. There, there are plenty of characters who get tons of figures, so at least somebody is making a lot of Naruto figures. Uh, unfortunately, I think version 3 is where Mega House peaked with Hinata. Uh, that design is just so sick, and while this one is not bad at all, I just don't really love how much of the blast covers her. Uh, I guess there's really not much way around this unless you turn the figure to the side. It is very cool though how like the energy is like spiking off the ground, the rocks are flying up in the air. So maybe it's not that big of a deal, maybe I'm exaggerating here. Uh, but I don't know, I just feel like I'm buying an energy blast with Hinata hiding behind it. And that's not what I would probably want. Yohane, Sunshine in the Mirror, 1 7 scale from Katokawa, 19,300 yen. Decent price, all things considered, especially for the company. Uh, I think this looks okay. You know, it's definitely a departure from the typical Love Life figure, as this is a spin off series, but the art style is also completely different, which is why she doesn't really look that much like a Love Life character anymore. Face is still cute, though. I like it. The grin, pretty endearing. The shading on her hair, really nicely done. And her staff is kind of cute. I, I think that's like a dog. I can't actually tell what it's supposed to be. Looks like a dog, though, uh, and I like that. Uh, I think the outfit, though, I mean, it's not the fault of Katakawa. I don't think it's the most, like, pretty thing in the world. I don't know. It looks a little drab to me. Uh, decent shade of purple, though, so I'm not going to knock it too much. Uh, and also a very, very, very bland base. I wish they tried a little bit harder there. Yeah, I probably should have expected this one to cost a pretty penny when I saw it at one hobby. This is the Kurumi Tokisaki Hanfu version, 1-7 scale by Eastream, for 38,500 yen. And nothing has really changed about this one since a couple of weeks ago. I still think she looks very pretty, the colors are lovely, and I especially like that gigantic paper fan behind her. The composition of this one just works for me. So, I, I don't really know what to add here. I like it. I feel like some people don't. I've seen some people say this doesn't really look like Karumi. I feel like that was easier to say at one hobby, just because, like, we didn't have the best photos. But this definitely does look like her. I mean, I guess you slap that clock eye onto anybody, it's gonna look like her to some degree. But, I don't know, this definitely feels like a Data Live figure, in my opinion. This is one I talked about at one hobby, the Hatsune Miku Mai Yoneyama, the latest street style cute version, made by Stronger a 1 4th scale for 48,000 yen. Very big, but very expensive, and it's all gonna come down to like how much you like this outfit. Uh, we don't have too many photos in the gallery, but despite her scale, she's really not gonna be that tall of a figure because she's sitting down, and really what you're gonna have to deal with is the width of this figure, the circumference, it's a humongous base circle down there. Uh, and I'm going to imagine they're gonna give you something like that. And the shipping price is also gonna be pretty damn high if I had to guess because of the box. Uh, but yeah, do I think this price is a little bit too much? Yes. But I do think it makes a decent amount of sense because Miku and her twin tails, uh, and they are nicely sculpted, and the outfit's very cute. I do like the design. The only thing I don't love about this Miku are her little, like, hair braids that are sticking out of the twin tails. I don't know, I find them kind of distracting. But I do like her bangs, the individual strands. I don't know, it just makes her face look a bit prettier to me. So, it's not all bad. Uh, there are lots of, like, strands running through the twin tails as well. So, consider that. Some nice sneakers, some nice, like, mesh material over here. Or, you know, it's sculpted, it's not actual fabric or anything. But they're simulating it, and I think that's neat. I like the design, I don't like the price, what can you do, you can't buy every figure of course, but it's definitely a stylish one. Alright, so I am losing my voice, I don't know why, I feel like this used to not be a problem when I made these videos, but I can definitely feel it right now. Uh, but there's a couple more that I really want to talk about before I like speed through to the end. So first up we have the Azur Lane Formidable, um, I don't know how to say that, but Ryro no Seiten version. 1 7 scale by Mythos, 26,400 yen. This looks straight up beautiful, and also very luxurious. Um, this is based off of some art from Azur Lane, and I'm gonna mention that in a second. I'm gonna pull it up for a specific reason. But, uh, yeah, you know, this price is a little high for Mythos, but at the same time, the prices have risen over the past year or so. So, it's whatever. Uh, I think there are a couple of formidable figures on the market right now. I know Alter has made one that was very popular. I feel like I like this design more, but I guess I typically like the Azur Lane figures when they're not 
wearing their traditional outfits. I don't know, I like when they do different things with these characters. And yeah, just like this ornate, crazy looking love seat that she's sitting in, decked out in this like real nice silver paint, a very vibrant red for the cushion, looks nice and plush. And then of course her main outfit is primarily black, which just makes her look sexier in my opinion. Uh, really not wearing too much, it's kind of like falling off of her as well. And when she's so well endowed, that's only gonna make her chest look even better. Also, her hair is enormous as it drapes down the back of the love seat. So this is amazing. Like, I don't really have that much I need to say about it. I just think they did a fantastic job with her face, her eyes, the body sculpt, the colors of this one. Also, I like what they're doing with her shoes. You can dangle one of them off of her foot or you could take it off. So you actually have an option on this figure, which I find neat. But anyway, like I was about to say, uh, the most interesting thing, or maybe the most exciting thing, is I'm pretty sure they confirmed that they're making the other two girls, Taiho and Ager, in this set. I don't know if they're gonna pair up as nicely considering the furniture that they're gonna come with, but hopefully they think about that. Hopefully you can pair them up and have them like shoulder to shoulder and whatnot. I don't know if it's just because she looks like she's the tallest, but Ager, I really wanna see how this figure turns out because my God, does she look pretty. So uh, yeah, I think Mythos has an award-winning set of figures on their hands. I'm expecting this to do very well. Uh, and it doesn't look like it'll be super expensive to ship either. So while the price tag might be a little bit more than average for them, uh, I don't think this will break the bank. You know, if you're willing to spend this much in the first place. All right, another important one we must talk about, the Hatsune Miku Japan Tour 2023 Thunderbolt 1-7 scale single shipment. That's gonna hurt for 50,000 yen by design, Coco. Not surprised, this thing looks absolutely massive. It is a unit, so, you know, this is not for the faint of heart. I love this, but that price tag is definitely keeping me away. Not gonna lie, do not expect to buy this figure. However, just the style of it is so unique. Just how like wild the energy behind this one is, how the thunderbolts are literally running through the figure. Though you would think that they would actually like do more of that because it almost gets lost in her twin tails, especially because her twin tails are changing to like a very bright yellow, which is very different for Miku. I mean, the figure costs 50,000 yen already. If you add more thunderbolts on top of that, it's gonna cost like 60,000, right? So I guess they had to restrain themselves or this would cost way too much money. Uh, I do like, I don't know if this is supposed to be like an actual strap or if it's actually like lightning bolts holding up the guitar, but I like the design of the straps actually being like those zigzaggy lightning bolts. That's cool. I really like that. I also really like the colors as garish as they may be. I'm not gonna lie. They're all over the place. They're not gradating into themselves. It's green and yellow and blue and pink and they're all just like doing whatever they want, but that's fun. It's stylish. It works. It fits the vibe. It's all super vibrant and just like the design of the guitar is super sick. The design of the skirt also having some lightning bolts down here. The base is very cool too. Just these like four or five diamonds squares almost making like an optical illusion in a sense. I think they're all like on top of each other, but it kind of looks like there's some depth there. So I, I do dig that. Also, isn't it just fun that Miku is actually like playing some music on this figure? She's actually so like into it. We don't get many figures of Miku with instruments these days. Uh, and she's just like jumping through the air, super dynamic, while the hair is all zigzaggy and wavy and whatnot. It's awesome, just can't afford it. What can you do? Moving on. And of course, we gotta talk about Alter for a little bit. They had three figures this month, I believe. The first one was the Sora Kasugano, Chinese dress version, a 1-7 scale for 23,000 yen. Now, I'm pretty sure this is exclusive to Amiami, so you're gonna have to buy it here. But I just find it very surprising that Alter likes this character so much because they've already made like six figures of her. I don't think they've ever made that many figures for one singular character before. So I guess they really like her. But you know, not too much to say about this one. I like the buns in her hair, I think that's cute. Her hair strands are very thin, which I think is pretty. And then they made the Chinese dress very short, which, you know, shows off her butt. Next up from Index, we had Misaki Shokuho, Tiger Bikini version, 1-6 scale for just about 21,000 yen. 
Yeah, this one's pretty straightforward, right? It's really just gonna come down to how much you like those claws, the paws, how sharp they are. Uh, her face looks amazing, though. I love those eyes. I mean, every figure of her has those eyes, because that's just how she looks. But they're pretty crazy to me. Uh, they're very eye-catching. Uh, no pun intended. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Just a bikini figure with a tiger theme slapped on top. Definitely works, just won't be for everybody. And last up for Altar was the Fate Grand Order Avenger Joan of Arc Altar Ephemeral Dream version, a 1-7 scale for 37,000 yen, a pretty hefty price tag. And because of this pose, I feel like it's not going to be a super popular one, despite how, like, pretty it looks. Like, there's no doubt that this is a masterclass in terms of sculpting, just the way they sculpted her hair draping down onto the base, the cloth of the dress, or just like the armor, however that works, also draping alongside it, the way they sculpted the armor itself, the gradients on her hair, especially at the, um, the tips of them, you can see it as I, uh, go through the gallery here, kind of turning into a very light blue, or maybe a purple, hard to tell in these photos, but it looks very pretty. Also, I hope there is a zoom in on her face, because I think it looks a lot better than their other Joan of Arc altar figure, which is a very popular release. I kind of want that one as well, but I never got around to buying it because the shipping was so expensive, and surely the shipping on this one is also going to be a bit of a nightmare. So, I, I don't know. You're going to have to pay a pretty penny for this one. I would expect around 50,000 yen, but you know what? Some of these figures do drop in price, so I would not be surprised if that happens to her. But you know, despite not really liking laying down figures, sitting down figures, this still looks stunning to me, and I would love to own it. Just the way they painted her looks exquisite. I don't know, something about this like dark blue, the shininess of the armor, and like the skirt portions especially, they're so eye-catching despite being darker colors. So, I don't know, just alters magic working for you, but it's gonna be very expensive, so... Oh, and she's also single shipment, so that's gonna suck as well. But also that doesn't really surprise me when I think about it. So, you know, it's going to be a bit rough for this figure, but we'll see. But with that, I think I covered everything that I really wanted to in this video. There's still like 10 more figures in this uh, little tab section I have opened up. But for the most part, I don't have too much to add to the conversation. But I can still highlight them at the very least. So from Fate Grand Order, we have Okita J Soji, First Ascension, 1-7 scale by Q's Q. For 24,000 yen, this is the one with like the jet thrusters behind her, which is pretty cool. And I do like the colors of them. I think they handled these pieces well. That was like my one concern about this figure when I first saw it uh, in its prototype phase. Weren't sure what the colors were going to be or the type of plastic they were going to use. But for the most part, a solid addition to the fake Grand Order lineup. Though I feel like that one probably won't sell super well. I can see that one binning for sure. Here we have the Azur Lane Joan of Arc Saintless of the Sea version, a 1-7 scale by Alice Glint for 30,000 yen. This is a limited version, which includes this like happier expression, which I do think makes the figure look a little bit better because I'm not the biggest fan of her default expression. It looks very bland to me, makes the sculpt overall look less impressive. I feel like it doesn't really work as well, but that's just my opinion. I've never been the biggest fan of this design. And I can't really pinpoint why, because they're pretty much copying the art one for one, but it just doesn't look as pretty, for whatever reason. There was also, from Blue Archive, Hatsumi track version, 1-7 scale by Furyu, for 24,000 yen. I'm sure she's popular, looking at this design, but man, like, it looks kind of cheap. I don't like how they painted her hair, her wings, like, we've kept seeing all those Albedo figures, and her wings look so much more detailed there. Here, it's a bit more cartoony, which isn't a problem, but if you're gonna charge premium prices, I expect you to put a little bit more detail into those feathers. Base is huge, though, you know? Like, this looks a little bit big, and I don't really know why. Maybe they're compensating for the wingspan. But yeah, I don't want to make it seem like I hate this figure or anything. I just feel like it should be cheaper for what they're putting out. It's not the most impressive Blue Archive figure I've seen, pretty much. Apprentice Nurse Ai Tsukuyomi won 6 scale from BB Buttons for 18,000 yen. Part nurse, part angel, and she's also wearing like a school swimsuit that's kind of frilly at the same time. Might not be a swimsuit, but it certainly looks like one because it has like the name tag on the front. And she's also just sipping on some blood. So, very weird design. Not sure what's going on. This one was actually pretty cool looking. Here we have the Tatsuzaki Ryo 1 6 scale from Test for just about 40,000 yen. Now, unfortunately, I think that price tag is going to keep people away, 
but the design is great. I really like how they actually committed to the dragon tail. And the way it's sculpted, it almost makes it look like she is being lifted by the tail. Uh, cause she's definitely not touching the bottom of the base. But, who could say for sure? Uh, but it's a very interesting outfit as she's wearing like this really nice leather jacket. But also like a Chinese dress, but like only the top part of it. It's very skimpy. Um, and her eyes are like so unique too. Like this just, I don't know, it's just so different from all the figures we looked at today. Uh, it almost doesn't feel like it fits in this gallery, but I do love it. Even the lip gloss on the bottom lip, that's a nice touch. All the pearls, she's wearing a lot of like jewelry and whatnot. Uh, she's lovely, absolutely lovely. Uh, very fashionable in a strange way, but 40,000 yen, what can you do? Not gonna pick that up. Rabbit Girl by Gen Grandia from Hobby Sakura for 19,200 yen. Yeah, they definitely pulled in an expert on this one. Those are some ridiculously nicely sculpted toes. And you know what? This would be pretty darn cute and also, you know, pretty sexy at the same time because of the way she's sitting, but I cannot stand the way they like painted her glasses. I just don't like those frames at all. They're very big, which is fine, and I'm not against glasses or anything. But just like the colors, like that weird green or yellowish stripe over there. And I can't tell if they're supposed to be like metallic, so like one side is more silver instead of gray. But I feel like they don't fit her face at all. I, I don't like that. Um, but yeah, they, they definitely pulled in a, a pro on this one. They're very nicely done. From Azure Lane, we have Implacable, a 1-6 scale by any game for 23,400 yen, which seems like a fantastic price for this figure, assuming the quality is up to standard, because while she's really not wearing that much in terms of like her torso, chest is very revealing, stomach is showing a bit, and there's also a bit of butt fan surface as well as we turn the figure around, her hair is massive, and there's so much like fabric on her sleeves, it's draping all the way down onto the ground. It's bunching up a bit, starting to wrinkle, starting to crease. It's multi-layered. It's pretty impressive for this price point. Um, and it's tall too. Like it's a 1-6 scale. I don't know how tall canonically this girl is, but she certainly seems decently tall. But you know, looks can be deceiving with some of these characters. Sometimes they look like they're six feet tall and then they're actually five foot two. So I don't know. But uh, yeah, this seems like a fantastic price for this figure and this design. Another Azure Lane figure, this is Perseus, a 1-7 scale from Wings Inc. for 32,200 yen. This one is very dynamic in terms of the hair sculpt, but also the skirt as well, or the, the dress rather. It's flowing completely outward and like up in the back, uh, so it's just so much flow and dynamism to this one. Uh, I find it very funny how realistic this owl is just compared to the anime art style of the girl. Uh, it does not really fit at all, in my opinion, but I'm sure people who actually play this game and like this character would completely disagree with me on that, and that's probably the correct opinion, but as an outsider, it, it just looks goofy to me. But the sculpt looks wild, like all these tassels fluttering about her staff, if there's like a better photo of it, looks like it has a really cool design on it, maybe some flowers or something. Did not even realize that she had wings, they kind of blend in a little bit too much for my liking because they went with translucent plastic, but that might just be how it's supposed to look, so I don't know. Have no idea what this is supposed to be back here with the globe, but it's certainly interesting. Very cool. And hopefully I'm not forgetting anything important. If I did, I'll put it on screen like right now. Hopefully there's only like one thing maybe. But here we have the Arknight's Dusk Everything is a Miracle version, 1-7 scale by Furyu for 25,240 yen. I know for sure there are other figures of Dusk either on the market right now or they're in development. I think Alter is making one, but that's definitely nowhere near done. And I think Apex might be making the other one. Is this single shipment? Why is this single shipment? This does not look that big. Like even if you have a slot for the sword, a slot for like this dragon up here, the tail, surely this would not need a massive box to ship. There's no way at all. It's a little wide, sure got some like furniture incorporated into the design and maybe that's the sheath I think that's the sheath some flowers down here very pretty I love the colors too a lot of blue and red which just like really go nicely with each other especially the lighter blue I think lighter blue and a bright red is a lovely combo also the um the gold bangles around her tail look pretty cool too yeah they're probably jumping to conclusions they might change that but it's definitely a bummer to see uh, are these actually flowers they kind of look like berries I don't know I guess it doesn't really matter. Uh, they add a little bit of like lushness to the base, which 
otherwise doesn't have any lushness to it. It's more modern and sleek. So that's interesting. Uh, I do like how she's reaching out to the little dragon. Uh, definitely just like holding it, but maybe doing a bit of a scritch, a little scratch here and there. I like that. Uh, yeah, she looks very pretty. This is a great design. I feel like Dusk, uh, I don't know a lot of Arknight's characters, but I definitely like Dusk. So, good on you, Furyu. I think you've done a good job so far with Arknight's from what I've seen. So hopefully you continue delivering. Alright though, that's it. That's gonna do it for our pre-order roundup for February. So, let me know in the comments what you thought about this month, if you're gonna be picking up anything, or if this month sucked. Doesn't really matter to me, but I wanna hear your feedback regardless. I'm gonna go work on this video now, hopefully I have it out in a day or two. Not gonna mention which day, actually I already did in the beginning. So, by the weekend, hopefully that's the plan. Either way, thanks for watching, really appreciate it. I'll see you next time, and have a good day. Later.